We have many years of history between our defense companies and the Saudi defense companies, including building components for sensitive U.S. systems. I don't know the exact technology. Sometimes technologies have to be controlled very carefully. That was my job uh, when I was in the government at the State Department. But uh, we do have a tradition of collaborating between American defense industry and Saudi defense industry. So this is not a new thing. The issue of arms transfers to Saudi Arabia is a little bit different than the issue of having Saudi Arabia build components. The issue of arms transfers is currently uh, a fight in Washington between the White House with President Trump and the Congress. And this has more to do with uh, the, the prerogative between the two sides of the government. In other words, Congress has always uh, g had the authority uh, to approve or to disapprove weapon sales over a certain amount of dollars or certain kinds of sensitive technology. And what the president has done is to put a major arms transfer package in front of, Con uh, well, uh, to try to transfer it without Congress having any uh, ability to say yes or no. Uh, this, uh, this is a big issue between the two sides because for 30 or 40 years, we have never seen a uh, president uh, bypass the Congress completely on a major list of weapons transfers to many countries. This one is not just Saudi Arabia. There are many countries. And so it, I think Congress is objecting, and uh, I think they will resist this because their authority is being undermined. Uh, the issue of missile technology from China to Saudi Arabia has a long history. Uh, I was part of this history. I went with the Secretary of Defense to see Deng Xiaoping in China uh, in the late 1980s after the first incident. Uh, this was very sensitive for the United States. And then there have been other questions uh, in previous years. Uh, so now this issue is not new. I think it is a sensitive issue for Washington and they will, uh, I think it's, this is important for US and Saudi uh, leaders to, to speak very confidentially and make sure that American security interests um, are taken into account. This has been a real concern for a long time, so I do think there is a red flag regarding Chinese missiles uh, coming into the Middle East. I've been studying the Mujahideen e Kalk, the resistance group in Iran, uh, for many years now as an observer. I wrote a book about uh, the history in uh, 2013 because I was concerned that the US government had the wrong information, that they were believing things that were not accurate. And this concerned me greatly as a national security person. So I studied it. I have come to know the resistance very well. Uh, I know them. I have visited them. I have been to Albania and visited the actual members of the Mujahideen e Kalk. Uh, I have interviewed them. I know their family stories. And I find that they, from the very beginning, were not a group uh, for terrorism. They were always trying to have the rights of the people of Iran. And so uh, in Washington, I'm trying to educate people about the true facts. I was in Paris when His Royal Highness Turkey Al Faisal gave his speech. I listened to it, and I spoke to him right afterward. And we have discussed it. Uh, he, he gave a history of the relationship between uh, the peoples of Saudi Arabia and the Persian people. It was a very positive history going back many, many years. Then he talked about the Ayatollah Khomeini and the revolution of 1979. And this has caused a very dark cloud over the entire region. I am aware that uh, the Iran regime has tried to uh, unsettle all of its neighbors. They have tried to create sectarian strife, in other words, Shia against Sunni, even inside Saudi Arabia. And I have discussed this with His Royal Highness. It's, it's a very serious crime for one country to try to destabilize another country. And Iran has been doing this in Iraq, in Yemen, in Lebanon, and of course in Syria and other countries. So it's a major issue for the United States. Uh, we agree with Saudi Arabia that Iran uh, must, this regime has caused so much harm and I could go into many details over the years, and they continue to do much harm. So I was not surprised 
that uh, His Royal Highness uh, Prince Turkey expressed support for the resistance. Uh, in Washington, they are still controversial because uh, many people in Washington still believe that, uh, that there are moderates and reformists who will change the government. Uh, I do not believe this, and I also believe that the people of Iran are rising up and calling for a better government. And uh, so we will see what happens. But Saudi Arabia and the U.S. have, a, I think, a very similar view. When I look at uh, His Royal Highness King Salman, um, I see someone who uh, has been known for a long time by the Americans. Uh, he is respected, and he projects dignity, and he projects, uh, I think, the culture of, of the Arab people in many respects from the Arabian Peninsula. So we uh, have had a good relationship with the king, and we, we ha think he has acted in a statesmanlike manner uh, and looks to the future. Um, I have not met the king, and I have not met the crown prince, uh, but obviously we have read a lot, we have seen a lot about Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Um, he obviously wants to move to the future. We uh, want to see the effort uh, to reclaim Islam uh, in a moderate, modern form, the way most people in the Middle East would like it. Uh, Iran has been actually pulling in the other direction on the Shia. In the Shia world, they have been very negative and very dangerous. And now we have uh, Sunni extremism as well. So it's very important to us for S Saudi Arabia to be a strong force against extremism. And we support that very much. We also support having Saudi students come to our colleges and universities. We want to have a good connection with the people of Saudi Arabia. And so there are many things which are important uh, to pursue between our two countries. And that is, uh, I share that aspiration. Uh, I'm looking forward uh, to our, the new ambassador coming to Washington, Princess Rima bin Bandar. I have had the pleasure of meeting her and speaking with her about her, uh, her previous portfolio where she was promoting women's business in sports. And she explained a lot of things to me. It sounded uh, very positive. She's a very dynamic and smart person like her father. Uh, she knows America. She has friends in America. I think she'll be a successful ambassador, so we're, we're looking forward to welcoming her to Washington. I looked at the Mecca summit meetings and with great interest. Uh, there's a long history of diplomacy inside uh, the Gulf among the GCC states. Obviously, one issue that Americans are looking at, that many people look at, is the disagreement uh, with Qatar. Uh, I give Saudi Arabia credit for welcoming uh, the Qatari Prime Minister, the King shook his hand, the Crown Prince shook his hand. So we look at this and say, from an American perspective, and I can only speak for my country, uh, we have large geopolitical concerns, and the Arabs are our friends. So we are concerned about Iran's aggression, we are concerned about extremism, we want to move to the future as economic partners, as friends, even though our culture and history are different, and that's fine. So in many ways, it's a hopeful sign that there can be positive diplomacy, even though we know our friends have a disagreement. And this is why I think the Trump administration is working on the Middle East Strategic Alliance, which is GCC plus two. They are trying to find important ways to cooperate among these countries, even though they have internal disputes. But we don't want to have those disputes uh, overtake our, geo, our shared concerns. They're too important. We don't want I Iran or Russia or someone else to exploit the disagreements inside the Gulf. And so our, we are hopeful that these can be resolved over time. That's the American view. I'm very familiar with the U.S. military operations in the Gulf um, in many countries. Actually, there, I wish there were more places where we could disperse uh, different parts of our capability because we have issues in Afghanistan, we have issues in Syria, we have concerns in the past in Iraq, and there's always the threat from Iran. So these are all reasons why it's important for us to maintain strong cooperation with our Gulf friends and partners. Um, as for why we have bases in one country or another, um, these are all, I'm sorry to say, you know, very important to us. These are things which we need today. We may need them in 10 years. We may need them in 20 years. This is why the White House 
is trying to maintain long-range thinking uh, and encourage our friends, including the Kuwait mediation, to try to minimize the internal political disputes and to encourage all countries, Qatar and everyone else, that anyone who is supporting extremism uh, should, should try to stop. This is something that is a common view. It was expressed by the president when he went to Riyadh in, uh, in June of 2017, and it, it applies to all countries. And so I have to say, as an American, while we have a very great relationship and a long-standing relationship with Saudi Arabia, we also have other relationships that are part of a strategic view. And uh, the one thing that we have changed is we are not making close friends with Tehran, and I hope that everyone appreciates that.